Whoa! It's the illusion reported from somewhere on Spaceship Earth. All right, man. I think I'm going to tell a story again. Feeling story-ish. I'm going to tell you the story of my 1969 VW Combi van. Yup. I had one. Go figure. So it is roughly... 1990, 90, 92, 91, 92, 93, somewhere in there. Not really sure where. I get this 1969 VW Combi van. It's bright yellow. It's rad. I loved it, man. I was ready to change my pace. So I go and I pick up this VW Combi van and the guy gives me the first piece of advice. For all you V-dubbers out there. Buy the thing. He's like, look. Plan on leaving 15 minutes early. And getting there 15 minutes late. I'm like, alright, dude. I was full super stoner at the time, dude. I'm like, perfect, bro. So, but right off the bat, this bus has a quirk. It will only play Bob Marley's Uprising. And I should make a separate video about the album, Bob Marley Uprising, the complete album, song one to uh, Redemption Song, because that album explains everything, dude. So anyway, I get this bus. It will only play this one cassette tape. Now, I bring a bag of cassette tapes with me, and it will only play this one cassette tape. So... I get the bus, I have the bus, I'm doing the bus thing. I get it. And I'm li I do the thing for a while. But now it comes time to go on a big surf adventure with the thing. And my buddy Chip Booth and Chris O'Keefe are heading down to Scorpion Bay via Cabo San Lucas. So they're going to drive all the way down to the tip of Baja and come back up and stay at Scorpion Bay, which is the uh, the big right-hand point break down there. It's like halfway down the peninsula. And they're gonna, we're going to surf and fish on the thing. They're like, why don't you come along? And I'm like, okay, dude. I will join the fun. So we gear up with the thing and the whole deal... We buy like a month's worth of supplies. Because you have to know, this is back in the day. There's no cell phones, no Google Earth, none of this nonsense, dude. It is literally like a map and bring everything you can type of deal. Like there's no... It's traveling's different now. Anyway, so we go, we go to Costco. We buy like a thousand bucks worth of stuff. We fill my VW bus. My VW bus is tip top, by the way. So we fill up my VW bus with stuff. We go, we set sail. Like the day before, I'm just going to drive by myself. But the day before this dude Soren jumps on board. This cat Soren jumps on board. Oh, wow. This I've, Now I think about this story. I better speed it up. So this cat Soren jumps on board, we take off, bro. But we leave, because I'm in a VW bus, we leave three days earlier than Chip and Chris because they're driving a cheap, a Jeep Wagoneer or something, you know, a Cherokee. And all right, this is the two different vibes. We can only play Bob Marley Uprising. Their trip is they bring like a box of cassettes and their vibe is we're not going to listen to the same cassette twice this entire trip. So that sets the stage with the two different mindsets of the two different vehicles, dude. So we leave three days earlier because we're a slow car, right? We're a VW bus. These guys are speeders. So we're, we're going to meet down at the uh, halfway down the peninsula past Guerrero Negro. There's uh, an oasis. Literally an oasis. Like out in the middle of the desert, there's palm trees and there's a bubbling spring and there's an oasis, dude. So we're going to meet at the oasis three days from when we leave at noon. 
Now, remember, there's no maps, no cell phones, none of this stuff, dude. So we are literally pissing on the side of the road, like five kilometers outside of this oasis. You can see the oasis, and we hear the honk, and it's Chip and Chris jamming by us, literally on time. So we meet these dudes at the oasis, Three days later, at exactly 12 noon, boom, it's on. We take off. Now we're like a team, but they just, we leapfrog. They just take off and, and find us our camping spot down the road, and then we meet them there. Like, we have, there's like a big, at the time, there was a big, like, um, like, topographic atlas of the whole Baja Peninsula. So we'd pick our spot, and we'd meet them down there. We go down there. Gosh, dude. We go down there. We eventually get down to, to Cabo San Lucas, dude. We surf Conejo on the way down. We surf a couple spots. We get down to Cabo San Lucas. We go and we surf the Seven Sisters and all that stuff. We surf. We finally decide after we've been in the dirt for a while that we're going to go stay in Cabo and, uh, you know, freshen up. We get crazy in Cabo. There's another story with Richie Wolcott that's its own video. But anyway, me and Richie Wolcott, and if you don't know who he is, he's the dude who started Volcom Clothing. We get into like a fist fight over this chick. And I won, by the way. I took her home. Boom. We Oh, so, all right. So the, that day, the boys had rented a uh, fishing charter, right? Because Chris and Chip were big gung-ho fishermen guys. I don't fish. I could care less. And my buddy Soren, he doesn't fish. But they're like, you have to come. We're paying for it all. You've got it. This is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. So we go out on this fishing boat, and we've been partying the whole night before, so we got a vicious hangover. I'm getting sick over the side of the boat, and I got a double bloody nose, and we, I'm puking, and we get out to the middle of the ocean, and I see... The most incredible thing of nature I've ever seen to this day. It is the ocean alive with, this is what it was. It was flying fish, flying everywhere, flying fish. And if you haven't seen flying fish, they're pretty wild. So there's flying, and this, there's flying fish and there's tuna launching into the air, yellowtail tuna launching into the air, like 10 feet into the air, just sky everywhere. And the tuna are being chased by pods of dolphins. And this insanity is going off as far as the eye can see. It is a frenzy of flying fish, Yellowtail and dolphins, all in this just insane food chain insanity, dude. Like, if you haven't seen a yellowtail tuna boost, you're missing something in life. Like, it's one of the more incredible things. Just look it up on YouTube, people. And flying fish, check that out on YouTube. And dolphins going crazy, check that out. Mash that all together. And then just take that to the horizon. So that's what I'm seeing as I'm puking out the boat with the double bloody nose. And these dudes are catching fish. Right? So we get back to port. We go out that night. We're partying. I brought Richie Wolcott for the chick. I score the chick. I'm taking her back to the, the hotel room. Chris is in the, I bring her into the hotel room. Chris is in, dude, <laughs> Chris is in the bathroom and he's filleting up tuna steaks, right? But he's in his board shorts with the big fishing fillet knife and there is blood covered. It's one of those giant, like, uh, you know, tiled showers, but a huge one. He's in there with the coolers and there is blood 
all over the walls of the shower from him just going off, dude. But you walk in and it's the direct shot and this chick sees that and is like, oh, what? And I'm like, nah, dude, it's, it's, it's cool we caught a bunch of fish today, but she's not having any of it. Her, like, survival instinct says, no, I'm leaving, dude. I just saw you beat up another dude to bring me home, and now your bro in the room is filleting up steaks, and there's blood covering the bathroom walls. So, that's us in Cabo. We go north. We go north, we get to Scorpion Bay, and we're hanging out in the dirt of Scorpion Bay. At this point, me and Soren are kind of arguing a little bit. You know, a bunch of dudes stuffed in a car together for weeks in the desert heat, drinking beer the whole time. We're drinking beer the whole time, just so you know. Drinking and driving, yes indeed. So uh, we get to Scorpion Bay, man, we end up surfing. It never really gets that good. I see the second most incredible thing of nature I've ever seen. Outside of our tent, this every night at sunset, the whole, every bug in the universe flies towards the pot by us. I don't know where they were going. I don't remember. They were coming from the desert, going down the point. But anyway, it is like a swarm a various flying insects every night at sunset. And it is like, I don't know, it's like that thick. It's thick, it's, it's a sheet, it's just sheets of, of bugs flying by. So anyway, we, uh, we're flying, this is all going on, it's crazy stuff. I happen to be reading, just so you know my state of mind, I'm reading Upton Sinclair's The Jungle. If you haven't read a grim, dark book, go read that. <laughs> that won't cheer you up one bit. So I'm reading The Jungle. It's hot. The surfs never really come together. It's time to go. I get into a big, huge flip out with everybody. We flip out. We decide we're going to go up to up, up to Abriejos, open eyes. So we go up there. We drive through just the longest roads of washboards. Oh, and note to those who know, I take the east road in my VW bus out of Scorpion Bay. And if those who don't know, the east road, in order to start the road out of, uh, I forget the name of the town, but coming out of the town there, it is literally like a vertical switchback and it's boulders. The road is made up of boulders. It's not made up of like gravel and ruts, it's boulders. But you know, VW, the people's car, climbs that thing. No problem, I take the East Road out of Scorpion Bay. Yes, I did. It's kind of an accomplishment. Anyway, we go to Abriejos, we bump into this kid up there. And we ran into this kid down in Scorpion Bay. We bump into this kid up there, and he's rolled his pickup truck drunk, and it's totaled. And he's like, hey, man, can I get a ride back up? Ah, wow, the story's about to turn dark. So we're like, he's like, can I get a ride back up to the States with you guys? And um, we're like, yeah, we're heading back up there. Now, the washboards are so gnarly. I mean, they're like boom, 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 boom ones leaving the and. Then we decide we're going to make a punch for the border because the VW bus isn't sounding so good anymore. Like, not the engine, like structurally. So we're now we're on the road. We're cruising, and the highway used to, I don't know if it's like this anymore, but it used to be that the highway was two lanes with no shoulder, and it just dropped off on either side, like, three or four feet. So you couldn't, like, you can't merge off the road, right? You have to, like... Do a 90 degree like and off the road. And make note that there's 18 wheelers jamming by. It's two lane road and they hug the center line and you're in a VW bus. And every time 
a VW bu a, a semi comes because the VW bus is so light and it acts like a sail and the the wind. You have to turn at the 18 wheeler because when it passes you, it's going to push you to the shoulder. So every time I would come, I have to aim at it a little bit, get pushed to the side, and steer it back and correct it. It was insanity. The whole drive down there was insane. Heavy duty, the real deal. But all of a sudden, man, we're and the engine stops working. Like it just, and we're we're coasting now. Everyone's asleep in the van. Soren, this kid we picked up. And like I said, there's no merging. There's no just pulling off. So I got to do the full root and just jump the bus down into the thing because I see a road. Boom, get it off the road. Oh, shit goes flying everywhere in the bus. These two dudes are scared out of their wits because they think we're dying. We're dying. And we're not. We're broken down on the side of the road. Out in the middle of nowhere. Like nowhere. The middle of the desert, dude. And we're sitting there trying to figure it out. We can't figure it out. I got a giant bag of tools. I'm not that mechanically inclined. I can do like my valves. I can do various things on my bus. We don't know. But all of a sudden, we see this, this car pulls up. And it's these two... Dudes, are they coming or are they going? It's these two dudes. They're coming back from this little, way off on the, the distance, there's a town, like a little settlement out there. They're coming from the settlement and they stop. They're going into town or something and they're all freshly showered, dressed all nice. And they're like, I got that wrong, man. They, they pull off the road. They see us. They're like, we're like, hey, can you help us? We don't speak Spanish. Get that in mind. They're like, yeah, we're going to, we'll go in and we'll go in to get, this is what it was. They're like, we'll take one of you guys into the mechanic guy in town. So they go into town. They get the mechanic guy. He's completely showered, super clean. He comes up to the bus all he's got is this poker thing with like an alligator clip and a wire. He goes under the bus. He fiddles around for a moment. He gets it started. Boom. <coughs> he's like, come back to the village. So we go back to the village. <coughs> we buy beers for all these guys. We're drinking beers with all these dudes. Turns out what they are is they're watermelon farmers. And they have watermelon fields out there so we go out to the watermelon fields with all the guys and we proceed to get hammered with these dudes out in the watermelon fields and they give us a bunch of watermelons and I'm so stoked to what this did for me I give this guy my bag of tools I got a giant bag of tools because I'm like dude I don't know how to use them you know how to use them you're in this crazy village here's my gift to you the bag of tools my video is running long VW story part two is coming up. No, I think we can do that. I forgot it, it'll work if I do this right. And so we get, we're doing the thing out there. We're partying with the watermelon guys. They give us a bunch of watermelons, dude. We load up on the bus. I give this dude a bag of tools. We're motoring now. We're cruising north. We're hammered. You know, not crazy. But uh, we're driving north. And the sun's beginning to set, but as the sun's setting, somewhere around Guerrero Negro, I'm cruising up, and you see, sitting in the road, a blackened out frame of a car that's burned up in the middle of the road. And we're passing that, driving, like the sun's setting, we're going to drive into the night and drive all night north. And we look at that, and we're like, wow, that's scary catchy because someone's going to plow that thing. You couldn't see it. There's no like cones or tow truck people or highway patrol guys out there like making sure you don't plow into this thing. There's just a burned out frame of a car sitting in the middle of the road, dude, on the only highway in Ba. We're like, that's not a bad sign, but we keep powering. 
We, we're heading north. We drive all night. We get to the border. We get through all the nonsense at the border. This dude lives in like Oceanside or somewhere in there. We go to his house. He's like, dude, you can sleep at my house and take showers and do the whole thing. Because I'm, sh I'm shot by now. I've been driving for like 24 hours straight. I'm shot. We get to this dude's house. Now, the one side note is this. The dude, Soren, who's been my co-pilot, he's never driven the entire trip. Because my V-Dub's sensitive, dude. It only... That only drives for me. So he's never driven the, the VW bus the whole time. So, people, the story's going to take a dark turn here for a second. So if you're not ready for it, tune out. So anyway, we go to this dude's house. We go in. He's like, all right, man, take a shower. The couch is yours, dude. Boom. So I go in. I hop. I take a shower. I get all cleaned up. I go and I lay down on this couch, dude. My buddy Soren goes in to take a shower. I'm laying on the couch, trying, nodding off, man. I'm like, you know, 24 hours, haven't slept tired, driving all night tired. All of a sudden, the kid and his dad, it's his dad's house, start getting into a fight because the kid's filling his dad in that he rolled the truck down in Mexico and the truck ain't coming back and the dad's flipping out because the truck's brand new. The truck's new. The kid got hammered, rolled the truck in Mexico. There's no truck. So it's, people are screaming in the background. I'm sleeping. Like, whatever, dude. Now, the kid has left, but he left a litter of kittens at the house, dude, right? And the old man's flipping out. And he's like, you left all these kittens here and they're covered with fleas and fuck you and he gr starts chucking the kittens against the wall ah uh, yeah as dude as sketchy as you could imagine the dude's winging the kittens against the wall the kid is screaming and crying and don't Kill the kittens and the dude's chucking the kittens against the wall and the cats are screaming and dying and the whole thing. And I'm like, ah! and I get up and I run out of the house. I run out of the house. I jump in the bus. I get in. I see all the stuff that the kid had brought with him. I load it into his car, the other car that's sitting in the driveway. He's got another car in the driveway, like a, a, a Mazda ZX2000 or Datsun, whatever those cars were. Boom. So I unload all this kid's stuff into his car, right? I'm sitting there buckled up shotgun. My buddy comes out of the, the house with the towel and his hair wet and a pair of shorts on. Like, what the fuck is going on in there, dude? The guy's killing the cats and... Dude, I'm like, dude, we got to go, bro. It's, we got to go. They're going to kill us. We got to go. And my bro's like, dude, I can't drive the bus. I'm like, what do you mean drive? Dude, drive the car. I can't drive. I have, I'm, I'm hallucinating. He's like, dude, I haven't driven. He, now he gets all pissy. I haven't driven the car the whole time, dude. You can't expect me to drive the car right now. What do you want me to do? Drive the car. You drive the car. I'm like, fine. So I get in, I get in the car, we're out of here, dude. I peel out in the bus. Dude, now, I don't know where I am in Oceanside or wherever the heck we are. I forget where we really were. I think it was Oceanside. All I know is this, my one strategy is just keep making bigger circles and eventually you'll hit a freeway. Urban thinking, right? So I find the freeway eventually. I get on the freeway, Brrr, I'm motoring north. All of a sudden, dude comes up on my driver's side. It's the kid in the car, screaming, 
making the swerving the car at the bus and I'm swerving and he's screaming, fuck you. He's, he's losing his mind on us. I'm going to kill you guys. I'm going to kill. I'm like, oh, bro. My bro's like, what the fuck? Ah, we're, we're driving down the interstate, brrr, swerving all over the road. And all of a sudden, the kid punches it ahead and locks it up on the interstate like chips, like a copper. And the brrr, and and I fucking see what's going on and I fucking dart. There's an off ramp to another freeway. I just whip the VW bus right off the thing, right into the, the, whatever the thing is, the interchange, right? All I see in my mirror is smoke and this dude reversing it on the freeway. I'm like, dude, and he's reversing, and it's like some fucking movie thing, dude. There's cars locking it up. You, dude, as I'm driving around, you can see mania going on on the highway. He fucking gets down. He, now he's alongside us again, and he fucking does the thing, and he gets us off to the side of the road. And he's flipping, and he's out fucking ah, and I'm, he's like, you stole my stuff. I go, dude, your stuff's in your car. I put your, all your stuff in your car. And he looks, he's standing by the side of his car, screaming at us over the car, and he looks in the car and sees all the surfboards and shit, and like, instantly, his vibe changes. He's like, dude, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry about what just happened. I'm like, dude, it's okay, man. We just need to go, bro. Like, it's, it's okay. And he's like, no, no, man. Like, dude, I'm sorry about my dad, the whole thing. I do, I, let me, you come over to my other bro's house. You guys can rest there. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, dude, it's cool. It's, it's super cool, bro. We're, we're heading back to Malibu, man. Like, yeah, dude, welcome back to America, bro. We're done, we're, we're, we're done with you, bro. We're out of here. So we split, right? We get rid of this dude. We're cruising now. If you don't know the thing, between Oceanside and San Clemente is this giant military base. And in the military base, there's nowhere to turn off. It's like 25 miles long, but there's like traffic and stuff, and it's the mid-morning, mid right? Because we So I'm driving... And I'm telling my bro, I'm going to fall asleep. I'm like, dude, I'm going to fall asleep. I'm going to fall asleep, dude. He's like, you can make it. Bro, all we got to do is make it to San Clemente. We're almost there. Don't crash down. I'm like, dude, I can't keep the car on the road. I can't keep the car on the road. And so we make it to San Clemente. I climb in the back. I sleep for like five hours. I get up. We drive home. I get rid of this dude. We're like, we're not going to talk anymore. Like, I didn't even know. The, I knew the dude 24 hours before he got my van. He got out of the thing. I literally just, he just found me on Facebook like two months ago. Said, hey, dude, what's up? Dude, Soren. But that was crazy, right, wasn't it? So anyway, there's more to the VW bus. But I told you how I got it and only, and only played Bob Marley Uprising the entire trip. Ultimately, the VW bus, I'll tell the other part, the end of this VW bus is story. That was just the Cabo story. I should have just kept it to the Cabo story. Anyway, it's the illusion. Storytelling time is over. That's a half an hour into it. Late. <laughs>